Hi everyone, in this video we're briefly going to introduce something called iterated integrals. So iterated integrals. So an iterated integral is just uh, something where you integrate more than once. So we have two cases. So one case will be the integral from A to B. And then we write the integral symbol again, and here we have g sub 1 of x, g sub 2 of x, and then here we have f of x, y. It's a function of two variables, and then we have dy, dx. That's one case. We'll come back to this. Or the other case which we have is we integrate here from c to d, and then we integrate here from, here we have h sub 1 of y, and then here we have h sub 2 of y, and here we have f of x, y, dx, dy. Okay, let's talk about both of these cases uh, carefully. So the way it works is you go from right to left. So you first integrate this piece here. Okay, I'm going to put it in a purple box. You'll notice here we're integrating with respect to y. So we're integrating out the y, and the limits of integration are functions of x. So we're left with a function of x. This is a func of x. Boom. And that totally makes sense because now we have to integrate with respect to x. And we have numbers on the outside, so we end up with a number as the result. Okay. Over here on the right, we first integrate this. It's always integrating from right to left, right from the inside out. We're integrating a function of two variables, f of x, y, with respect to x. So we're integrating out the x. The limits of integration are functions of y. So the end result is a function of y. Boom, and that totally makes sense, right? Because now we have to integrate that with respect to y. And then we have numbers on the outside, so this entire thing is equal to a number. Let me write that down. So the outer limits, the outer limits uh, are constant, are constant. And the inner limits, so the inner limits are variable right? They're variables, or they can be. They don't have to be, but they can be. They can be constants, too. So our variable with respect to the outer limit, so the outer variable of integration, outer variable of integration. integration. So, so everything makes sense. You know, a lot of times, uh, when you're looking at integrals, uh, you just have to make sure that things uh, make sense. If you're reading a book, always make sure that what you read in the book uh, makes sense. A lot of times, you'll see stuff that's just not correct. Um, so, so check it out. These are functions of x. So this entire thing here in the box is a function of x, and we integrate at the end with respect to x, so life is good. This box here is a function of y, right? Because the, the limits here are functions of y. And then at the end, we integrate out the y, and we get a number. So... Um, let's go ahead and do a simple example uh, of, of doing one of these iterated integrals. So I haven't done this one yet, so it should be fun. Um, so we're going from 0 to 2, and then here we're going from 0 to the square root of 4 minus y squared. And the integrand is x plus y. Um, dx dy. So first we have to integrate with respect to x, then with respect to y. So step one, step one in this problem is that we first integrate this here. Okay, so we first do this. Okay, I'm just putting the bracket there as a visual aid. You don't have to do that. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, so, so this is the integral from 0 to 2. And so we're integrating with, with respect to x. So it's going to be x squared over 2 plus yx. And now, I said you don't have to do that, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the bracket there. Again, it's a nice visual aid. You can use one line, but I feel like the bracket provides more um, clarity. And so these are x values. So if you really want to clarify, you can, you can do something like uh, x equals 0, x equals 
you know, the square, you don't have to put the X's there. Uh, I'm doing it just because I don't want to mess up. And then we have DY. But it makes it a little more clear. Uh, it, it keeps you reminded of what you're doing, right? You're replacing X values with the limits of integration, right? Because you integrated with respect to X. So it really is kind of a beautiful way um, to do it. All right, so now we uh, evaluate this. We plug in the top one first, subtract, plug in the bottom one, right, the lower limit. So this is equal to, we still have this integral here, 0 to 2. So we're replacing x with the square root of 4 minus y squared. So we're going to square it here. So it's just going to be 4 minus y squared over 2, right, plus y. And then x is the square root of 4 minus y squared. Then we subtract and we plug in 0. But when we plug in 0, we're going to get 0 squared over 2 plus y times 0. So the whole thing is 0, so I'm not going to bother to write it. And then parentheses, dy. So now we have to integrate this with respect to y. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, I think I'm going to break this up into two integrals. So this is equal to, so first it'll be 4 over 2, which is 2, minus y squared over 2, which is 1 half y squared. And this one is with respect to y. And it's from 0 to 2. And if you're wondering why I broke it up, it's because this one's going to require a u substitution, right? You'll see. So plus 0 to 2. This is y, square root, uh, 4 minus y squared dy. All right, let's go ahead and be really careful here. And let's do the u sub here. So we'll let u be what's inside the square root. So we're going to let u be equal to 4 minus y squared. Then you compute du. So du is negative 2y dy. And you have to make this look like what's in your integrand. So I guess we have to divide by negative 2 because there's no negative 2 in our integrand. So this is negative 1 half du equals y dy. And if we really want to be perfect and professional, we should change the limits of integration. So let's do that. So when x is equal to 2, our u value is going to be 4 minus 2 squared. So 4 minus 4 is 0. So our upper limit of integration will be 0. When x is equal to 0, sorry, not x, when y is equal to 2. Wow, very easy to mess up. So right when y is equal to 2, these are y values. I'm glad I caught that. <laughs> When y is equal to 0, it's really easy to mess up here. u is equal to 4 minus 0 squared. So u is equal to 4. So when y is 0, u is 4. OK, let's keep going. Let's go ahead and integrate this first one now, since it's here. Integrating 2, we get 2y. Integrating this one, we get negative 1 half y cubed over 3. Right, So it will be negative 1 sixth y cubed. And we're going from 0 to 2. And then now we're going to integrate this one. So the y dy, that becomes negative 1 half to u. So minus 1 half integral. Okay. So y dy is just negative 1 half to u. So I'll write that here. So that takes care of this. We're left with the square root of this. We said that was u. So square root of u. So I'll write that as u to the 1 half. When y is 2, u is 0, so the upper limit is 0. Um, when y is 0, u is 4, so the lower limit is 4. Really, really delicate and messy. All right, let's keep going. Evaluating this one, we plug in 2. We get 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 1 sixth times, and then 2 cubed, which is 8. And the rest of them are going to be 0 because the lower limit is 0, and there's y's everywhere. So minus... 1 half. Integrating this one, we'll use the power rule. So it's u to the 1 half plus 1. So 1 half plus 1 is 1 half plus 2 halves, which is 3 halves. So it's u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. When you divide by 3 halves, you really multiply by 2 thirds. And we're going from 4 to 0. Wicked stuff. This is equal to 4 minus uh, 8 over 6 is, I believe, uh, 4 over 3. These cancel. We get minus one third. And let's evaluate this bad boy. So plug in the zero first. We get zero to the three halves minus, okay, four to the three halves. Let's keep going. 
This is 4 minus 4 thirds. I decided not to subtract them yet. I'm hoping uh, some type of miracle will happen. 4 to the 3 halves. Let's try to do this without a calculator. 4 to the 3 halves. What you do is you put the 2 in the little pocket here. The 4 goes here. The 2 always goes in the pocket. Put the 3 wherever you want. So it's 2 cubed, which is equal to 8, right? So it's going to be minus 1 third. And then it's 0 minus 8, right? So I'll just put minus 8. So this is 4 minus 4 thirds plus 8 thirds. So this is 4 plus uh, 4 plus 4 thirds. Right, 4 plus 4 thirds. You can add these. You can multiply 4 uh, by 3 over 3. So it's 4 times 3 over 3 plus 4 over 3. That's going to be 12 over 3 plus 4 over 3. And the final answer is 16 over 3. And that's correct. I actually have the answer. I just I haven't worked it out. So that feels good. We did the entire thing with no calculator from scratch. Uh, totally awesome. I hope this video has been helpful.